So if you're worried about keeping your kids active this summer, there are plenty of opportunities at local schools. Whether you want to make that perfect jump shot, or you want to hit that opposite field single, or you want to figure out how to catch that perfect touchdown pass by this fall football season, there are plenty of ways to keep your kids active and away from the TV this summer. And Sports Director Wes Hamilton is live now from Panther Gym at Lufkin Middle School. Hey, Wes. Hey, guys. How's it going? We're out here at the fourth annual Piney Woods Showdown. As you can see, the girls game going on right now, almost to halftime. Coming up, we're going to update you on that score, and we'll have some live interviews with the boys' head coaches coming up next in sports. Yeah, Coleman, we knew coming into this game either way an East Texas team would be bringing home the trophy, but now that the dust has settled between the top two teams in the state, the Lady Hornets sure are happy to be bringing home that hardware to Hudson. With the Jacks winning their last six games in a row, it might be their time to shine. Next up, they'll either play Northwestern or Lamar, but with all these players contributing, it may not matter who they play. From the Merrill Center in Katy, Texas, I'm Wes Hamilton, East Texas Sports 9. He's live with details on the future of two coaching positions in the athletic department. Wes? Yeah, thanks, guys. Up to this point, there was no clue on who's going to lead the soccer and baseball programs into the future. A lot of those questions expected to be answered tonight. We have the live report next in sports. So now the Lady Hornets can celebrate all the way back to the Piney Woods as they have brought home their first ever softball state title. From the state tournament in Austin, Wes Hamilton, East Texas Sports. And sports director Wes Hamilton in now with more continuing coverage here of tonight's meeting. Yeah, thanks, Lane. A lot of uncertainty going into the evening about multiple key staffing positions within the athletic department of Nacogdoches. After it was announced that Coach Fashid would be back, the look of relief in the crowd and on his players' faces was obvious. When FBS level football, that's the division that competes in BCS games, finally decided on a 14 playoff recently, there was a huge celebration. It felt like a game changer. Well, teams like SFA at the FCS level just laugh that off because their playoff system is now expanding from 20 to 24 teams in 2013. The AP is reporting that beginning in 2013, 11 conferences will have an automatic bid and 13 more teams will be chosen for at-large bids. Only the top eight teams will be seeded and receive first round buys though, allowing the other 16 to compete in the first round in a more geographically convenient way. By the way, the Jacks, the last time they made the playoffs two years ago as the Southland Conference champions, they lost to Villanova in the first round. Go! There it is! There it is! There it is! Ah, ah. That is just like music to many football fans' ears. The sounds of pads popping all around today at Lufkin's first padded practice. It's time to find out who's a complete football player and not just a seven-on-seven -seven participant. Coach Todd Quick says it's always fun to see who's ready to be physical as the pack prepare for their first game coming up in just two weeks. Well, everybody's really excited about getting the pads back on. You know, we, it's been all summer since we had them on since the spring game. So we've got some that are tickled to death and they bounced out of bed this morning. And we got some that were a little bit worried about it. Uh, but overall, people are there excited about it and ready to go to work. The pack will have their only scrimmage next Friday against Beaumont Ozen. And then Friday, August 31st, the lights come on and the scoreboard starts to count. That means there are just 14 days until our first Friday Night Madness right here on KTRE. You can join us then for highlights, scores, and more from around East Texas starting at 11.05. Some interesting NFL news to share with you now. I don't know if you're going to believe this, but a woman is suing the Dallas Cowboys, saying her buttocks area was severely burned when she sat on a bench outside Cowboy Stadium last year. Now she claims after sitting on a black marble bench during a 101 degree day, she had to receive medical attention. Here's the kicker. She feels she has a claim to sue since there were no warning signs about not sitting on a bench in hot weather in the middle of summer in Texas. Okay, now for some real NFL news on the field. According to the AP and USA Today, the Houston Texans have signed left tackle Dwayne Brown to a contract extension and it's a big one. The deal is reportedly for six years and $53 million. The six foot four tackle has started all but four games since the Texans drafted him 26th overall in the 2008 draft. Some other significant players still unsigned though for the Texans. Quarterback Matt Schaub and defensive stud Connor Barwin are looking for new deals. Welcome to the Boys and Girls Club of Nacogdoches where they host the East Texas Twisters gymnastics team in one of East Texas's only state of the art facilities. These girls start chasing their Olympic dreams at the age of six, and they say being able to watch groups like the Fab Five win gold in London is great motivation 
for why they want to work so hard themselves during every routine. It's a lot of fun and encourage me, it encourages me to work harder to go to the Olympics. I asked six-year-old Madison Woods why she trains so hard during every workout. So I can be Gabby. So you can be Gabby? Gabby Douglas, that is, the American gymnast who's already brought home two gold medals this summer in London. And while these girls are far from that level of competition, it's actually very important to get an early start in this sport. Nowadays, gymnasts have to start young if they want to go anywhere in this sport, so it's awesome and it's a blast to be able to spend time with these young girls and teach them the awesome sport of gymnastics. And the stats back Coach Bullock, the age of the all-around champion in the Olympics in 1952, was 30 years old. Gabby Douglas, this year's winner, is only 16. So even 10-year-old hopefuls in East Texas understand the importance of training hard right now. You have to keep up in conditioning and work extra hard, especially when it's when meat seasons are coming up and meat seasons are right around the corner. Football is a loud and violent game. For Lufkin defensive end Demontre Lewis, it's completely silent. But that doesn't mean he can't feel the electricity of a Friday night in Texas. On um, Fridays, when I'm sitting down, on the sidelines, I can feel like the the band and stuff. I can feel the vibrations. I can't hear it. I can't hear anything. I'm totally deaf, but I can feel the vibrations with the band. It gets me all excited. When the game gets heated, his interpreter Renee Heinzschel says Demontre just likes to sit back and laugh it off. He laughs at me. He'll come over in the sideline and says, that boy's saying something to me, and I just look at him and say, my ears don't work, keep talking. It's just like a big joke to him. It's just like, eh, whatever. He said, I'm, you know, the ball's going to snap, and you're fixing to get yours. If you've been out to a Panther game, it's clear the impact that Lewis has on the defense. He's even earned a Defensive Player of the Week award. You also probably noticed how he likes to express his excitement. I want to show off that I can hit and to tell people, to yell and get, get everybody excited and get more feeling into the game because the more I can feel, the more I want to tackle and I just want to say I'm too big. Coach Outlaw can't help but be proud of his defensive star. I'd take 22 to Montrez because he's always got a grin on his face. He ain't ever frowning. He, you know, he loves playing the game. He's a happy boy. He's an inspiration to uh, high school football. DeMontre says he couldn't have done it without his friend, teacher, and coach, who's been by his side since he was three years old. I remember when I was little, when I first met Miss H, and we would walk together holding hands down the hall. You never knew it would lead to playing football for the Panthers. Ryan Lewis is not your typical nine-year-old boy because he already comfortably flies around in a race car before he's even old enough to legally drive. It goes about 60, 65. How does that feel? Uh, it feels kind of good because all the wind in your suit and all that. Lewis races competitively year-round from coast to coast with other kids his age in go-karts on tracks similar to IndyCar open-wheel racing layouts, but he says he never gets scared. <laughs> After finding out that his son had been pursuing racing on his own, Steve Lewis decided to change both of their lives and let Ryan pursue his racing dreams year-round. It gives him the opportunity to go places and do things that, that most kids don't get to do. Anywhere we go, we make it, it's not just about the racing, it's also we have to deal with school. Every place we stop, we try to make, make it an educational experience along with the racing. As for Ryan's goals? I have a dream that everybody can understand all the feelings about racing. My dream is to, is that and uh, follow Jeff Gordon's footsteps. Lewis could be well on his way too with many circuit event wins already under his belt. This little dream chasing daredevil just might one day be seen on Sundays with the pros.